part of what we call public opinion was just a manufactured narrative that makes it easier to convince people that if their views are different, then there's something wrong with that or there's something wrong with them. Spending is a tax. As soon as the government spend money, eventually it's a tax. Sometimes we put a direct tax on the people. Sometimes we borrow the money. And sometimes we print the money. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The Patrick Riggins Show. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Hey, welcome to another hour of the Patrick Riggins Show. Yeah, your hour of sanity, logic, and reason. Putting the issues of the week into the context of the original and true American values of freedom and liberty. Playing some Metallica there, for whom the bell toes, holes, <laughs> to start the show off this week. You know, from watching the news and reading on the internet, Americans are looking for answers that you only find on this radio show. The result of that is the gradual rolling back of this increasingly intrusive and arrogant government that has developed within our country. Americans are wanting an answer for all of this, and the bell is tolling for the two major political parties and all their hacks in the media trying to sell us on their snake oil. <laughs> this is the Patrick Rickin Show coming to you live on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and locally here on or locally here in Knoxville, Tennessee on News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I want to hit on some NSA news before we get started into the meat of the show this week. We posted this on our NSA monitored Facebook page. It's a uh, story about them, the NSA. So, hey, maybe they got a kick out of reading it. It ran, uh, the story ran in the UK Guardian this week and is entitled NSA paid millions to cover PRISM compliance costs for tech companies. What it says is the National Security Agency paid millions of dollars to cover the costs of major internet companies involved in the PRISM surveillance program after a court ruled that some of the agency's activities were unconstitutional. This is according to top secret material passed to the UK Guardian. The technology companies, which the NSA say, says includes, this is the NSA saying it includes Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, and Facebook, they incurred the cost to meet new certification demands in the wake of the ruling from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. The October 2011 judgment, which was declassified on Wednesday, found that the NSA's inability to separate purely domestic communications from foreign traffic violated the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution. An NSA newsletter entry marked top secret and dated December 2012 discloses the huge cost entailed. Quote, last year's problems resulted in multiple extensions to the certification's expiration dates, which cost millions of dollars for PRISM providers to implement each successive extension costs covered by the special source operations of the NSA. Oh, <laughs> isn't this nice? The government demands these Internet companies give the NSA access to all of their data, and the cost to do it is put on the taxpayers. So we're paying the additional cost of making it easier to spy on us. Are you sick and tired of the NSA yet? The disclosure that taxpayers' money was used to cover the company's compliance costs raises new questions over the relationship between Silicon Valley and the NSA. Since the existence of the program was first revealed by The Guardian and The Washington Post on June 6th, the companies have repeatedly denied all knowledge of it and insisted they only hand over user data in response to specific legal requests from the authorities. An earlier newsletter, which is undated, states that the PRISM providers were all given new certifications within days of the FISA court ruling. Quote, all prison, PRISM providers, except Yahoo and Google, were successfully transitioned to the new certifications. 
We expect Yahoo and Google to complete transitioning by Friday, 6th of October. A prison operates under Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act, which authorizes the NSA to target, without a warrant, the communications of foreign nationals believed to not be on U.S. soil. But Edward Snowden's re revelations have shown that U.S. emails and calls are collected in large quantities in the course of those 702 operations, either deliberately because the individual has been in contact with a foreign intelligence target or inadvertently because the NSA is unable to separate out purely domestic communications. Last week, the Washington Post revealed documents from Snowden that showed the NSA breached privacy rules thousands of times a year in the face of repeated assurances from Barack Obama and other senior intelligence figures that there was no evidence of unauthorized surveillance on Americans. Now, we've been talking about this on the show for months now. In fact, we covered this last revelation just this last week on our show. The newly disclassified court ruling by then-Chief FISA Court Judge John Bates also revealed serious issues with how the NSA handled the U.S. communications it was sweeping up under its foreign intelligence authorizations. The judgment revealed that the NSA was collecting up to 56,000 holy U.S. Internet communications per year in the three years until the court intervened. Bates also rebuked the agency for, that's the judge again, Bates also rebuked the agency for misrepresenting the true scope of, major, of a major collection program for the third time in three years. There's really no surprising here, news here. I mean, really, is anyone surprised to see this kind of thing and find out it's been going on this whole time? I'll ask the question this week that I asked last week. Are you going to do anything about this? Or am I uh, interrupting your television time? <laughs> this stuff isn't going to stop or go away just because you don't want to pay any attention to it. In fact, it's going to continue to grow and become more draconian each day you sit there and allow it to go on. Now, this story dovetails nicely with another one that ran on foxnews.com this morning. It details the National Security Agency acknowledged Friday, this last Friday, that some of its analysts knowingly violated the agency's rules after the incidents were included in an inspector general report. Oh, but hey, you can trust the government. You can't trust big business or rich people. No, but you can sure trust your buddies at the government. Bloomberg News reported earlier that a new report by the agency's, the NSA's, agency's Inspector General found several cases over the past decade where people deliberately violated internal rules when it came to conducting surveillance. The NSA's public disclo disclosure earlier this week of secret court rulings showing that some data has been inadvertently collected from Americans has ra raised concerns about the amount of time that such materials are retained in government inventories. National security officials said earlier this week that they had initially kept such records as long as five years, but whittled that retention down to two years after the chief judge of the secret Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court declared parts of the surveillance operation unconstitutional in 2012. That'd be Judge Bates. The NSA altered its collection processes, and then the judge then allowed the operation to continue. So isn't that great? The a judge said the NSA didn't have to stop collecting all this information about people. It just had to, quote, alter its collection processes, unquote. So collecting information in clear violation of the Constitution, that never entered the, judge mind, the judge's mind. It, just the process by which it's done. We absolutely have to get this government reined in, or we're not going to have any freedom left in five years. We're practically already being monitored 24 hours a day. Pretty soon, the only place you'll be able to be alone is in your own mind. But, you know, I'm sure they're working on that, too. <laughs> All right, we're up on the first break here on the Patrick Riggins Show. We have a lot to get to. 
And we'll get started when we get back here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 WOKI.